How does the Kyler Murray extension impact Lamar Jackson? We talk about that and more next year on Locked On Ravens. You are Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As we return here with another episode of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostreicher of Ravens Wire, and we're here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Ravens your first listen of the day. We're free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube. And we're back to round out the week before training camp. I know football's in the air here, and here to talk about it with us today. Kadri Ismail, former Baltimore Ravens wide receiver and, of course, a Super Bowl champion. Q, I'm excited. Training camp football's in the air here. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Now comes the enjoyment of the season. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm stoked. This is uh, great. Rookies are reported, and right around the corner, the veterans are going to be here. And uh, I believe there was a, a surprise visit, or maybe not a surprise to some of the people in the building, but to everybody else who've been a little negative, Nate, Nancy, or however you want to identify yourself, I believe one Lamar Jackson is not holding out, but reporting to camp. That's right. Yeah, and I, I don't know. There were some people saying, oh, Lamar, like, Lamar Jackson's not holding out. He's not holding out. And I'm like, when was there ever talk about Lamar Jackson holding out? Like, I didn't I didn't see any talk about that. So he, he's in the building. We saw him walk in there earlier than veterans have to report. So that was a that was a good sign coming right after what? that. Lamar's that- the leader? Leadership exactly. Oh Lamar is a leader, and I know for some people it's like, "Oh no, he's not," but he is. And that was posted right after the uh, Kyler Murray extension news, which we'll talk about in the second segment. But first, Q, there have been some little Ravens news transactions here and there. The first of a lot of them being on Wednesday when the Ravens placed undrafted rookie wide receiver Devin Williams on the reserve did not report list. They placed undrafted rookie Ricky Person, the running back on the left squad list. And they had Benjamin Victor on the NFI list. I mean, moves like that, like they did not report list. Even like, I didn't know the left squad list was even a list. Like I didn't know that was a thing. What are moves like that? They open up two roster spots there, but I mean, an undrafted rookie wide receiver, someone who is expected to compete and I'm drafted rookie running back. I mean, those moves, they might seem small, like small ones on the surface, but now the Ravens do have a couple roster spots to work with here with those guys now, I guess, no longer being with the team here. So <clears throat> a couple of things. I remember Brian Billick was like, listen, when we are in camp, don't cut yourself. Don't think that, you know, you start counting numbers and who's here and what's there. Let me do that for you. And, you know, guys would get a chuckle. Guys like – um the late Tony Saragusa or a Rob Burnett or, or heck, you know, a Ray Lewis or Shannon Sharp. Guys, you just know J- Jonathan Ogden. They ain't going nowhere. And at the same time, if you're an undrafted rookie free agent, in your mind, you're like, yeah, the chances of make it, me making his team are slim and nil. So you do. You kind of start counting reps. You counting spots on the team and, and who's getting what and where you at on a depth chart. Um but it could be stressful. It could be one of those scenarios where, you know, it really plays on your psyche and you can't handle it and you can't handle it well. I think that's something that, you know, Brian Billick wanted you as a player to know, like go out there, do your job, do your best, compete, see how it all unfolds. And then at the end of the day, if you're not good enough, I'm going to let you know. I think for these gentlemen, they, for whatever reason, they probably went to the off season program and, Something led to something, which ultimately led to the fact that they felt that they weren't able to compete to the level that they needed to to make the team, and they cut themselves. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, what the situations were, and again, like not making any assumptions about what the situation was. It could be another circumstance, uh, something that's just going on in their lives. But the Ravens and uh, Jesse Reaper kind of talked about this from the Athletic. You know, they open up two roster spots there, and they actually do re-sign yesterday offensive tackle David Sharp, who I thought played decently well overall in, in, in some limited opportunities. And Q, I know we've talked about the tackle depth before on this show but i mean this time this year compared to this time last year even with the assumption that stanley was coming back last year because that's what everybody thought he was going to come back and play and be be great but he only played one game 
I feel a lot more confident in their tackle depth now that they have Morgan Moses, Jawan James being back. They draft Daniel Falele, and obviously, hopefully, Stanley is able to return. Plus, you add David Sharp in there, and you have Patrick McCarry, who can play some tackle as well. How, how are you feeling about their tackle depth? Yeah, I, I like it. Um, when I saw that list, immediately I was like, well, one thing is true. You're going to have a lot of rotations going through, so guys should have fresh legs. And at the same time, defensive uh, line, they do a lot of uh, rotating guys through. And, and training camp, you know, especially John Harbaugh-type training camps, can be stressful on the body. So the fact that you have that much good and quality depth is, uh, is a great, it's a great problem to have. Yeah, and I think when you're talking about great depth, <laughs> you also have to talk about the running back position. Now, I know last year a lot of stuff happened, a lot of yeah. stuff happened before the season started. But now, again, more of like a not quite this time last year because we were, you know, J.K. Dobbins hadn't gotten hurt. Gus Edwards, same thing. But when you're talking about how this team looked at the beginning of September with Latavius Murray, Devonta Freeman, and Le'Veon Bell, Compared to now, when you're hopefully getting J.K. Dobbins back, you're hopefully getting Gus Edwards back. Plus, though, Mike Davis, Tyler Beatty, Justice Hill, potentially. I mean, there are a lot. There's going to be some roster shuffling that goes on there. But how confident are you in the running back room, either with Dobbins and Edwards there, or if both of them have to miss some time, how are you without them in for a couple of games? Yeah, I think Mike Davis is the real, you know, the real deal, the the, the X factor, if you will, a guy who has some real time experience. Um, I like the fact that he can be utilized out of the backfield. There's been a lot of talk of how he's, you know, really a reliable target. And they were surprised at the way in which, you know, he was able to make himself available, understanding the concepts. So those are some really good things. And I think, you know, for Greg Roman, his offense predicated on a run. We're, we're well aware of that. But, uh, yeah, you have a guy like that, a veteran guy that, you know, can show some of the younger players what's what. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm Gus Edwards and obviously JK are the two main studs. Everybody else, you kind of fall in line and, and, and figure it out. But the fact that these two studs are, are, are waiting to be cleared by the doctors and training staff. Then in my mind, if, if I'm one of those other guys, I'm like, I'm going all out and I'm doing my best to make this team. Yeah, and one of the more underrated parts of the whole thing is the fact that you have Davis and Beatty assuming, like if Dobbins and Edwards do miss some time, you have Davis and Beatty with the team for the full off season. You're not signing a guy 10 days before the season who hasn't been in the system, has to learn a whole new offense. It, it can be tough, especially, you know, the mesh point stuff they had to learn with Lamar Jackson. It became kind of a, they're going through the beginning portion of the training camp in September to kind of get up to speed with the offense. And so I think that might have set back a couple of things here and there, but JK Dobbins on Twitter this week talked, talked, I'd say with Ian Rappaport yeah. and responded to a report that Rappaport put out about the fact that he didn't think that based off his source, that JK Dobbins didn't look like a sure thing for week one. It wasn't, you know, that sure. And then JK Dobbins comes back and says, Oh no, oh, no, it's going to be week one for me. So where are you with this whole situation? I know we've talked about his injury before. He seems very adamant he's going to be playing in week one. Where are you in terms of the recovery from ACLs and what everything goes into that? Yeah, you know, typically it takes about two years to fully be back and healthy and, and ready to go. So I'm not saying he's going to be back 100%. I think he'll be just enough. But a just enough JK is a really good thing. And again, I know the surgery, once you feel good about running on it, max velocity, I mean, the dude, you know, he's, he's a very cerebral runner, so he's going to know the offense. He's going to know what to do the whole nine yards. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, to be perfectly honest with you. It's about him managing the pain and the discomfort as the scar tissue kind of reforms itself. And at the same time, you got, you know, the, the connective tissue that's so important when it comes to how you're going to be and how you're going to recover. The main thing for him right now is how do I feel and how do I recover? Right. So if he's feeling good, 
you know, obviously if it is a two-year timeline, you know, it's, it, it differs for every player. Some players is going to be a little less. Some players are going to have a little bit more of a recovery time. Plus it's the physical and mental hurdles of things. Q. What's the mental hurdle that players have to get over with ACL injuries and, and injuries of that nature? Yeah. The biggest thing is taking a hit to the thigh and feeling like, you know what, my foot is okay. My leg is okay. Again, you know, I've been talking about this since the season is, is, is uh, has come to a close, and now the season is about to start anew. Anytime you train with your heels into the ground, it's patterning in that system for locomotive athletes to say, hey, that's okay. We can we could train with our heels down, um, but then that's a recipe for a re-injury. And I feel like with, with the whole two-year time frame, obviously Dobbins, I think, will be back far before that two-year time frame is over. It's, it's just – Regardless of how he's able to feel, I think if he's able to get back on the field, let's say he has to miss a game or two and he's back in like week three or something, just getting able be, or being able to get back into that full football groove, getting on the field and kind of feeling like himself again, that could be what takes, you know, a two year timeline or something. But I think for him, hopefully he's back by week one. You know, hopefully he is set. I wouldn't anticipate this takes it super long into the year obviously i'm not a doctor so don't 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 pin me as one but but i do think that with dobbins edwards peters and then you're looking at other injuries too stanley with his ankle hopefully these guys are going to be able to come back maybe one of them has to spend some time on the pup list but i think that those guys will be able to come back but again i don't think rushing them back is the right way you gotta make sure they're feeling good make sure they're great and then when we're talking about a time frame hopefully we'll see dobbins edwards and those guys back a year or so after those injuries did occur but we'll head into our first break here on the show when we get back we'll be diving a bit into kyler murray's extension and how that impacts lamar jackson so be sure to stay tuned still to talk about on the show but first i do want to tell you a bit about Bill Bar and Bill's doing a lot of great things right now and you've probably tried the coconut brownie chunk Bill Bar but now they have given that coconut brownie chunk the puffs treatment so now the coconut brownie chunk Bill Bar flavor is the deliciously chewy marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate it's like a fluffy cloud of that coconut brownie goodness of course and they taste great they're made with proteins that your body absorbs more efficiently and they provide a ton of health boost so you can eat something that tastes good and is good for you so that delicious coconut rich sweet brownie creamy marshmallow you can stop fantasizing about that and get to built.com or your box of coconut brownie chunk built puffs right now go to built.com use promo code lock 15 to get 50 percent off your order use promo code lock 15 we're back here our second segment of locked on ravens kevin allshaker still here with kadri ismael and q i know we're going to be talking about that kyler murray extension here but we've been doing on, on locked on a list of the top 50 most viable players for the odds makers at Bet Online that move the betting lines the most. And the list ends today. Is Lamar Jets going to make an appearance? You can find out anywhere you get your podcast and also on YouTube. But speaking of Lamar Jackson, Q, extensions keep coming in for quarterbacks in Lamar Jackson, whether it is intentional or not. The waiting game seems to be working out pretty well for him. Kyler Murray, the latest to sign that extension. 200, what, 30 million, 160 guaranteed over a five-year period of time. I think uh, the Bidwell family have lost their mind. Here's why. Because they've horrendously traditionally been cheap. Kyler Murray uh, had a woeful playoff game, but yet he took him to the playoffs. Um, you're talking about Lamar Jackson. While his playoff record isn't that great, I think with the resurgence of a potential bully ball, I think he will be okay. I think he's going to show out and show up and i think uh the passing attack is going to really really uh benefit for the likes of lamar jackson now all that said it makes it even better if you in fact do do the extension for lamar get it done out the way but it seems as though that window is just steadily closing if not it's already closed yeah, so the, the specs of the Murray deal here, you have a five-year, $230.5 million deal. You got $160 million of that guaranteed. So in ter- if, you're, if you're comparing it to Deshaun Watson, that Murray extension is $46.1 million. The Watson extension, $46 million per year. The Watson contract, five years, $230 million fully guaranteed so murray just beats out watson in terms of average annual value but watson gets the fully guaranteed 230 while murray gets 160 guaranteed so a lot of people when the when the tweet came out about oh kyler murray is close to an extension a lot of people were like well what's the money going to be like because is the deshaun watson deal going to set a trend of fully guaranteed quarterback deals and that obviously is not the case with Kyler Murray here. So when you're talking about a Deshaun Watson deal versus a Kyler Murray deal, Q, 
Could you see Lamar Jackson's maybe being somewhere in the middle in terms of guaranteed money? Maybe he's looking at 200 million guaranteed around that number with a higher average annual value, maybe 47, 48. Where, where do you see those two deals impacting Lamar Jackson, specifically Kyler's? Yeah, I think Kyler's is, is very intriguing because it's not fully guaranteed. But 160 million is 160 million. And if I'm, if, you know, I don't know, I haven't seen the language of the contract, but if I know that I'm going to be around and, you know, right now they're on the hook for me, I'm, I'm, I'm letting them know I'm confident, comfortable, and let's get after it. That's, that's my mantra. Yeah. And I know, again, so many people are, I don't even know what word to use, impressed. I mean, I, I'm impressed too by the waiting game Lamar Jackson has played here because, again, Lamar Jackson is going to make a lot of money. Like, there's no debate about that. How much money is, it remains to be seen, the length remains to be seen. But with each quarterback that signed an extension this offseason, Q, you're talking about Matthew Stafford, Aaron Rodgers, obviously this Kyler Murray one, you got Deshaun Watson's deal, and, and a couple others I'm probably forgetting here. Each deal that gets signed is a win, in my opinion, for Lamar Jackson. Because what he is doing is this waiting game. The price, like, you know, yesterday's price is not today's price. It keeps going up. And you're looking at a contract now that you're looking at Buffalo and Josh Allen in that deal. And you're thinking, oh, what a steal that was now. Even the Mahomes contract looks like a, big, a bit of a steal now. I mean, how, I, again, I guess impressed will be the word I used. Are you with this whole Lamar Jackson waiting game if it is indeed what he's doing right here? Well, clearly he's waiting. Clearly he's, he's bucking against tradition. Um, I've said this so many times before, the fact that you don't have an agent, someone to buffer the bat, talk about you. Um, and, and if you're representing yourself, you're going to be hearing the bad talk big time, <laughs> but I, I think it's kick gloves. I really do. I think Lamar's in a, a powerful position. Even if the franchise tag goes off, some were saying it was like 60 plus million, which is a fully guaranteed deal. Um, honestly, I just think that for what Lamar's doing, however shrewd he is, it's working. Um, I'd be curious to see how this this unfolds. Is it is it going to be a training camp surprise kind of a thing, or is it going to be well the season started? I don't want to talk contracts and not hear from anybody again. Yeah, and I know the thing that I keep coming back to is is the the betting on himself thing, which I think a lot of people think that is part of what's going on here. I know Jackson kind of talked about a little bit of this stuff in his a mandatory mini camp press conference and kind of said like, no, you know, contracts or the talk is ongoing. The talk is ongoing, but we've seen this before with Joe Flacco where he turned down the extension and bet on himself. And what did he do? He went on, won the Super Bowl, made himself tons of money. But I think again, to, to a lesser extent here, that was with Flacco. I think to a more upscaled extent with Jackson, if he turns down an extension and goes out and wins a Super Bowl, that is tens on tens on tens of millions of dollars for him. Yeah, it is. And I, I think, you know, that's the one thing you look at with Joe Flacco. Um, he bet on, on himself. He won. He uh, won big. I think for Lamar Jackson, he's kind of doing the same thing. Uh, both guys are fierce competitors. Clearly, from a Lamar standpoint, I'm trying to leverage as much as possible. So I wouldn't necessarily – want to just, um, I don't know, um, feel like uh, I'm just going to hold out for $60 million when I know I can get far greater and far piece of more uh, peace of mind as far as just the contract and everything. And, yeah, you know what? If I win it, I win it. If I lose it, it's not about the, the uh, distraction of, of what you guys are going to deem as the contract talk. You know, I think he can he can spin it however he needs to to suit his needs. Yeah. And I know a point we've talked about so much Q is the fact that when you're talking about extensions like this, they're always going to be massive. Like they're, they're going to be huge regardless of the money, whether it's $10 million here or $20 million there. But I think when you're looking at the Ravens organization, what you're kind of thinking their mindset is right now with the Murray extension is, you know, they're probably like, all right, that's a lot of money. But I think they were probably a little relieved that his deal was not fully guaranteed. Do you agree with that? I do. I think that, um, you know, most agents recognize Tyler <clears throat> or Kyler, excuse me, Kyler Murray's um, extension is a unique proposition for the team and for the quarterback. I mean, there's some ugly in there, but there's also some brilliance. And I'm glad for him that he gets a chance to 
settle his mind and just go out there and play. Like, oh man, stress free, 160 million. Get that to me all day, every day. I'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you could give that to me. I'd, I'd be more than happy. I'd, I'd be completely content with that. And I think also it, it's the whole what have you done for me now lately thing we've talked about so much, where it's what where was Lamar Jackson the second half of last year? He missed the game due to an illness. He started struggling in the Miami game, missed the back half of the season with the bone bruise. And so if he does bet on himself to have a better year or better back half of the year than last year, even that in itself, even if he doesn't win the Super Bowl, doesn't make the Super Bowl even, I think that still the price goes up there because it's it's a player that you see, oh, well, he just had a great year. Of course, they're going to want to sign him for more money than maybe he's at right now based off of what his second half was, even though he did have a great first half of the year. That's why for me, I I don't want my my guys getting caught up in all of it. I just want from a football perspective, I just want my guys to be ready, healthy to go. And if it starts off fast and ends fast, that's on me. Hallelujah. I'll take all the other criticism, but that's amazing. If you're a start fast, fizzle out type of a player, well, you're going to have some problems. If you're a person who is not necessarily fizzling out, but I'll say that uh, in their mind, they don't have a care in the world. So it's like, ah, it'll happen when it happens. And obviously this unique situation, I mean, the team is clearly saying they want to get it done compared to where things were kind of held close to the vest. Even a Kyler Murray, I think, was he like one of the first people to dump all his inf- or Instagram information? So do you put it back? Like, is it archived somewhere? Like what in the world? Um, but yeah, no, I, I I applaud him for, you know, again, the strategy that he's putting in play, um, that really matters. Yeah, and I think for Jackson this year too, it's it's getting his weapons back. I mean, I know we talked about Dobbins and Edwards and, and Stanley coming back. So if, you know, it's been a year since they've hit the field or almost a year, if it takes them another year to get fully acclimated to the game, that again, like two year-ish timeline overall we were talking about, I don't know. But I think <laughs> that Jackson has his guys and obviously Dobbins and Edwards even, you know, at 95%, hopefully they're, they're at 100, but even at 95%, 90% are an upgrade over what they had last year. So again, you're getting pieces back if you're Lamar Jackson. I think that's really big for him. But Q, I mean, the final thing I'll ask here, and I, I think my answer is 100%. Yes, people are asking now if Lamar Jackson is going to be worth all the money that he's going to get paid. I think he's going to be worth every penny. But people are saying, well, should they like should they reset here? When you have a talent like that, Q, you, you pay him the money. It is going to be worth it. Yeah, absolutely is going to be worth it. I mean, the entire uh, offense and what they do, it's predicated on his – movement and his brilliance with both his legs and his arm he's a he's a valid quarterback this is we're talking about Lamar Jackson you know an MVP talent so yeah like his strategies and all that is awesome I don't see why there should even be a level of doubt if Eric DaCosta feels he can pull the trigger and and sign him right the organization has been very clear about their stance on wanting Jackson back. Jackson has said he anticipates being a Raven for life. So again, both sides, it feels like have mutual interest with each other. It's just a matter of finding the specs, getting the deal. And a deal like this is never going to take like a day. It's not like they sit down and they say, all right, like, that's awesome. You know, there are a lot of things to work out here. Obviously it's taken a while, but again, I personally anticipate Jackson being in Baltimore for a very long time. Obviously, you can never guarantee things, but I have a pretty good feeling. We'll head into our final break here on the show. When we get back, we'll be diving into a bit of a mini training camp preview, talking about some positional battles to watch and more. So be sure to stay tuned. Still a ton to talk about here on Locked on Ravens. First, I do want to tell you a bit about Bet Online and BetOnline.net. Is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. You can find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball. You got the NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. And that line gets needs to be the top online resource for our sports waging information from live in-game betting scores and podcasts they have you covered. So go ahead over to Bet Online today. Use a mobile device to learn more about the action happen today. Bet Online, where the game starts. We're back here with our final seven of Locked on Ravens. Kevin Oshaker still here with Kadri Ismael. And Q, I know we're just, we've been waiting for this moment for a while. Ever ever since January happened, the Ravens go eight and nine. They missed the playoffs. People were talking about, you know, Chuck Clark gets up on that podium and says, watch how we bounce back. Well, the bounce back tour is beginning with training camp here. I'm, I'm excited for it. There are some 
really intriguing positional battles to watch players. I'm excited to see it and just hear about overall. I think one of the positions that I, that could be a huge, huge impact. It could have a huge impact is the left guard position because that you look at the rest of the offensive line, assuming Ronnie Stanley's healthy and you have a lot of positions set with Stanley at left tackle. I'm assuming Tyler Linderbaum at center week one, even though he is a rookie, I think they just, you know, they invested that pick. He's going to probably play. You have Kevin Zeitler at right guard. And what I'm anticipating will be Morgan Moses at right tackle, but that left guard position, you know, it, it's Tyree Phillips, Ben Cleveland, Ben Powers, even Patrick McCary. How are you feeling about the guys they have there? Yeah, I think they're all good guys. I think they're guys that are, are work in progress for some of the nuances that it takes to be an offensive lineman. I, I'm surprised Ben hasn't really broken through and just said, you know, this is my position. Everybody else stand behind me. I think, uh, you know, they what, they got a new uh, – line coach or whatever and um he does his thing you know I, I really respect the way he goes about his business and i think you know when we look at <clears throat> you know this scenario it's 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 totally um up in the air but i like if ben cleveland could put some stuff together and just be mentally locked in i mean i think we got ourselves a left tackle but it's a good problem to have when you got that many options to choose from which Ben are you surprised about? Ben Powers or Ben Cleveland? I'm surprised about Ben Cleveland. Okay. Ben Powers. Okay, you know, he's done what he's done. But Ben Cleveland, young, upside, um, if not now, win mentality. Uh, I just think that his mindset is one where whatever weaknesses he's been dealing with or whatever demons he's been fighting – Man, the Raven fan base, we ready for you, bro. Like, come on, be a part of this special team and this awesome, amazing uh, way in which you have the talent to keep Lamar upright. Yeah, for me, I think that with Patrick McCary, he he's like the, the veteran option who could win that job. But I like him in a super sixth offensive lineman role. He can step in play any of those five positions in a pinch. So maybe it does come down to the Tyree Phillips and Ben Cleveland. If that is the case, what, you know, two of those guys, I think Tyree Phillips played pretty well at guard. Now I don't think he's a tackle, but I think at guard he, he's pretty good. And I think Cleveland, obviously huge for a, just a massive guy overall, someone who just can physically impose himself. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that position. I know it's, 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 it's a crazy thing to have a mountain of a man. Like, and they have big guy like, Patrick Ricard is a huge guy. Clay's Campbell six eight, like Brett Urban six seven. They have they have big dudes on that on that team. But talking about Q, the tight end position, we've talked about Josh Oliver before. It feels like he's he's on the outside looking in. Is there anything in your mind he can do to potentially make this roster, or do you think it, it's really set in stone with those four guys? Because I don't see the Ravens cutting any of the four on the top of their depth chart right now. Yeah, you never know because you could have a great camp and. You know, you're trending along, and then all of a sudden, boom, J.K. Dobbins happens, Gus Edwards happens. Knock on wood that it doesn't happen this year. But, you know, the bottom line comes down to I will cut you, don't cut yourself. I'm just going to go back to that because that's where, again, when you look at uh, your performance, if you're so caught up in making a team or counting numbers on the offense side of the ball, defense side of the ball, or how many snaps and all that, that can mess with your mind, and you're really setting yourself up to be cut when they all turn on the film. Yeah, and I, I feel like when you're looking at this Ravens roster, they do have so much depth in, in so many areas. They're going to have to make some of those tough decisions. I know, Q, going back a, a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about it, like they might have to do the Ben Bredesen route where they trade a player that is a quality player, but there's just literally no room on the roster for them because they have so much there. Maybe they have to keep another guy in a different position, so that right. kind of takes away. So there could be some tough decisions where maybe Eric DaCosta does pull off those really shrewd moves and, and makes a makes a deal for an upgraded draft pick or something. One of the one of those battles though is in the secondary. I feel like we could be looking at a battle between Geno Stone and Ardarius Washington for one spot. I mean, we know how loaded that secondary is. We know how many good players there are in there. Bringing in Kyle Hamilton, bringing in Marcus Williams. But we do know the story of the cornerback room, which is they start with fifty healthy corners. And they end with one. 
So hopefully that's not the case this year. But with a, with a player like Geno Stone, Q, someone who's definitely rangy, can, can play in the deep half of the field, had a couple interceptions last year. Or Darius Washington, very versatile, can also play some safety, but also it seems like he's more of a slot corner in their system. Do you feel like there's a shot both those guys make the roster with others like Tony Jefferson there, who's probably not going to get cut, the rookies at the quarterback room or cornerback room? How, how are you feeling about the potential positional battle between Geno Stone and our Darius Washington? Yeah, our Darius Washington, I think he's he's a guy that you really you know respect and 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 and, and the way he's continually chased his dream as a football player. Now, with all that said, yeah, I think you know the one thing that kind of sticks out with Geno is he has um some real time experience and, and anytime you can get real time experience coaches tend to give you a, a, a preferential treatment and allow you to play um during the preseason even a little bit more until you are proven unworthy of going out there and playing man this is this is awesome this is everything for them yeah, and and i feel like the secondary position now like i feel we talked about where were you now compared to last year, I feel so much more confident this year compared to what they had last year in their secondary, but it will make for a couple of tough decisions. I feel like, because I, I love our Darius Washington as a player. I think that he is somebody who can make a huge impact, but is there enough room? If Geno Stone has this amazing preseason, amazing training camp, there, there just might not be room. And he's a guy, Washington, that I don't think either, actually either one, I'll say either one. I don't think either of those guys makes a practice squad for the Ravens. I think someone snatches them up because they're that good of a player. Yeah, true. No, you're, you're looking at little things. Now, remember other teams might be filling a certain type of way with their guys and so be it, you know, so it might be in the same position battle, you know, in that defensive side of the ball, linebacker side of the ball, like, okay, cool. Um, I think one thing that we've learned is, to not try to get too heavily in the prediction business. It'll drive you insane, but I do. I really like what Eric Tacasa has done so far with the place. It's, it looks phenomenal. And it will set up for a lot of competition, which I'm really excited about. And you kind of look, you look back to a similar situation last year because this was this was a battle that also last year included Nigel Warrior, who so many liked. He had a great preseason, but he did not make the cut and ended up signing with Seattle or the Seattle claimed them on waivers, I think it was. And I don't think he played a ton for Seattle, but he was a player that many thought was, you know, he was, he was a lock for the roster, pretty pretty sure thing. And then he doesn't make it. So it's, again, something where DaCosta has set up his roster to really have guys that can perform from 1 to 53. It's not like you kind of get to 40 and you're like, ooh, like, all right, now we're kind of getting into the who's this guy, who's that. Like, you you know 1 to 53, yeah. you, these guys will perform. And I think for yeah. training camp, it sets up battles, which are going to be really, really exciting. But, Hugh, I appreciate you having all of me here today. That's all I have for you. Thank you so much for – for joining me and when we get back next week it'll be it'll be full swing training camp i mean this is super exciting stuff and i'm looking forward to covering it here with you yeah it's going to be awesome i think just the fact that we are talking about this and the position battles and you know putting uh things into perspective as far as uh you know what the season is unfolding to look like man Devonte freeman go ahead bro you're gonna sit next to me and just stay retired now he, uh, Devonta Freeman. Hey, maybe if the Ravens go through some injuries, they they have they have Freeman on speed dial, and they'll and they'll be able to get him on on the phone. He's he's a Ravens legend after one year. Yeah. So I th I think that yeah, running running back room for the Ravens. I, I think it's pretty set. As much as it pains me to say that Freeman might not be there this year, but that's all I have you here today on Locked On Ravens. Thank you so much for tuning in. When we get back on Monday, we're gonna be diving into more Ravens talk. So be sure to stay tuned for that, and I will see you back here on Monday.